there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Uh, today we're gonna paint some double impatience, and look at this, my husband just brought this home from the nursery yesterday, and I thought it was so pretty, I just had to paint it before he put it in the ground. Um, I think you can tell who has the green thumb around here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is sketch on with my uh, Inktense blocks, but feel free to use watercolor pencils if you don't have these. Um, I wanna do a very um, basic gestural sketch. I'm making the blossoms life-size. I'm just, um, I'm just drawing what I see, and I think it's really helpful if you have the opportunity to draw from an actual flower what you see because it's a lot uh, easier because you can turn it around, you can lift it up, you can look at it closely. If you're not really sure how something looks, you can really get a close look in there. I'm just kind of drawing circles and putting the petals in it kind of like I would um, like if I was drawing a rose. The impatience are very similar to a rose. And I'm getting a lot of color with these intense blocks. Um, because, you know, I got a full, like, almost pastel size, uh, stick here, and it's going to give me some really, uh, lots of color that I'll be able to liquefy later, and, um, it's really going to make the painting really, really easy. I'm going to do a little bud up here. So I'm doing some closed buds. I'm doing some flowers that are starting to open. Um, and I'm going to actually see, I could turn my, my flowers around and actually get the flowers from exactly the right angle, which is another benefit to having the actual flowers here. So I'm going to do my, uh, main circle and then I'm just going to throw in some petals and they're really, look at this, just wavy lines. It's nothing, it's nothing hard or fancy or, or anything. I'm just, you know, putting in those petals and I think I want a couple of buds over here. And maybe some vary them in size so you get a a nice um, a nice variety. Uh, right. Hopefully that is not too loud. I guess I'll see when I turn on the uh, when I turn on my uh, my computer later to play this back. I'll see. Hopefully that's not too loud. Um, it's kind of unavoidable on the weekend if I'm trying to sneak down here and do a video. Everybody is uh, busy in the rest of the house, taking showers, using the water. It's a uh, it's noisy in the basement, but you know what? Sometimes you just have to, you have to go with it. It's, you know, I mean, I think people sometimes wait for the perfect opportunity to create their art or to do things for themselves. Well, I'll wait until I have a couple hours to spend or I'll wait until I have this or I'll wait till I have that. But you know what? That time doesn't come. If you keep waiting, it doesn't come. So you need to, you need to just, you know, when you feel inspired, you want to take a few minutes to paint, you just got to take it and you got to do it and don't worry about um, and not being perfect, and not being the perfect time. All right, and um, then I'm just going to kind of add a little bit of this lighter green in here. I haven't swatched out these colors yet. I know they're the same as my ink tense pencils, but I still think I want to make a color reference for my uh, for my um, the, t the lid of my box there. And I think I want to throw in some stem. We're going to get under here and get like a brown, I think. I think I'll go with this. this brown here. There isn't too much for, for brown stems, but I do want to get a little bit of brown to kind of um, do like the dirt, I guess. Because I don't have this kind of coming out of a pot. It's just kind of like a, um, a composition. Kind of all over. All right. And um, I like to get as much color as I can right off the bat. I'm going to put a little bit more of this little this other shade of green on my leaves. And also I'm going to put some of that in the background just to kind of fill it in a little bit. And I'm going to use a water brush today. Now the interesting thing about the ink tents versus um, the traditional watercolor pencil, it's um, once you've wet it and the color dries, it's actually permanent and you can paint over it. Um, I have had a situation where I've used red and I've used it really thickly and then um, you can actually get it to lift afterwards, but pretty much it's going to lock the color in. So I'm not filling everything in, I'm just kind of putting my shadows in. So when that dries, I can just kind of do a light wash over it and the shadows and, and definition will stay there. This is going to be a very quick tutorial. I've got a little league game to go catch in about 45 minutes, so it's going to be a very, very quick tutorial. Just going in and throwing in all my details. It's fun to be working right side up. <laughs> 
I was still getting used to it though. I keep wanting to, to do everything upside down, but I've uh, rigged my camera up so that it can actually be above my workspace facing down right set up it's it's uh i'm still getting used to it <laughs> i'm known at the end of the videos to like uh turn my painting around and say look here it is all done <laughs> no wait a minute now it's upside down i'm using a water brush here so to release more water i just give a little sometimes i'll do this on my little tray over here i'll just squeeze out some water get a puddle if i'm feeling like i'm and uh, i can squeeze it on a towel to clean it if i feel like i'm I don't want to have a big blob of water. You just give it a little squeeze and it releases more water. And now I can even go kind of go over those first ones that I did just to liquefy any remaining color and still keep my definition from those first lines. I uh, saved up for these with a set of 72 ink tents. I recently bought them. Um, I hemmed and hawed for a long time, but then I got a really good deal. So I decided it was time to take the plunge because I had been thinking about them for for since it came out I think and I'm I'm actually quite pleased that I got them I'm really I'm really enjoying them and I've only done a couple projects with them so far they just came the other day all right so now from the um the the leaves I'm actually going to go not, not right next to where I have already worked because I don't want to bleed into any of the wet paint so I'm just going to go in and liquefy these now if I feel like I need more dark I can actually use the sticks of color like a palette and pick it right up with my brush. So you can you can use them like pans of color. I would just let them dry out really well before I pick them up and handle them or put them back in or try to color with them again um, because they will get your fingers all dirty and they'll uh, they might stick into your palette afterwards. So I'll let, let them dry out really well before I put them away. They also get really soft uh, once they're wet so you want to make sure that you let them dry out because you want to make sure your supplies will last a long time. Ah, <sighs> so nice to have a nice long weekend. You don't have to get anybody. Well, we've had a lot of baseball games, but you don't have to get anybody up for school. It's just a kind of your little pre-summer holiday weekend in the States. Anyway, we have Memorial Day coming up on Monday. Everyone's getting their gardens in. That's what I planned on doing, but I really uh, got cold feet. So. I think I'm gonna have a pot of lettuce and basil and a few herbs and uh, you know take it take it easy. I think I, I think I don't think I'm emotionally ready to uh, undertake a raised bed at the moment. I think that uh, yeah, I'm not feeling very positive about that. I'm feeling like it's just going to be a big weedy mess in my front yard. So I've decided to uh, scrap that idea and uh, I have quite a few containers around because my husband has uh, has a green thumb and he's done little container things all through the years. So I think I might just take over a few containers and see if I can keep those alive. My orchids are still alive though. That's kind of exciting. I uh, got those from Mother's Day and they're, they're uh, still doing quite well. I don't know how long they're gonna flower for. They still have pretty flowers on them. Gotta soak them once a week, no more. And only for five minutes. I put, use a timer and everything. I'm probably, probably a little, uh, little too uh, uptight about it, but I just, they're so pretty. I wanna keep them alive. Now, can you see that over here? You see when I'm, I've got, I put all my little, um, my little sticks of color in a little pepper tray that I saved. You know, when you go to the grocery store, sometimes you buy the rainbow, you get the three colored peppers and they are packaged up and I hate to see all that packaging, but then I was like, you know what? I can keep that tray. That would be perfect for just like putting my pastels in or whatever I'm using on a project. And it does work really well. All right. Now I think I got one more leaf there that needs a little attention. Um, now for the rest of the background, Maybe I'll try starting it with a water brush, but if I feel like this brush is too small, then I will just go ahead and use something else. You know, I do have a larger water brush, though. I wonder if I get any water in it. I got this one right here. Oh, I do have some water. Let me try this. I have used it before, obviously, because I could see some, some staining on the tip, but let's just, uh, let me try that. Let's see how that works. I'll squeeze out a little. I got this, um... Well, quite a while ago, it was a set of four, and it was at Jerry's Artorama, I think. And um, it was like 11 bucks, and you got four different sizes, and it was an Aqua Stroke brand, I think. And um, I really like these. It was the best the best deal I've ever seen on it. It does have the little valve in there so that you don't end up with too much color at once. I mean, too much water kind of splashing out at once. I've had the, um, I usually love the Royal brand brushes. They have some really cheap uh, water brushes, which are fine, but they have no reservoir. They have no uh, valve in there. So when you squeeze it, you kind of, you can't really regulate 
what how much you get and it also tends to leak if you're traveling with it so you'd want to like empty it out before you went you know before you you traveled then fill it back up when you got to where you're going which kind of you know you might want to use it on the bus or the plane or whatever so I didn't think that was as useful you know certainly for what it, I think it was like three for five dollars or something it was cheap but um, I really like these aqua stroke ones a lot better and they, they have them on sale all the time I was just I think the list is like I don't know 30 or 40 bucks for the set but they always have them on sale at Jerry's Artorama for like 11 bucks so if you're looking for an inexpensive high quality water brush try that this one is one of the Niji's I think um, which is excellent but I mean they're like 10 bucks pop at least so <clears throat> if you want to save a little money and still get a decent brush I recommend the aqua strokes that's if you you know if you order online if you're if not I mean you can get one of those Niji's at the at the uh, pretty much any any art supply or craft store has them I like this really loose background it might not be for everyone so you know that's completely up to you I'm just I'm doing a very quick tutorial very fun and uh, expressive and you know that's how I roll that is how Lindsay do <laughs> still loving the true facts I gotta watch some more of those those are funny <laughs> There we go. True Facts is a uh, another YouTube channel. It's a uh, it's True Facts. It's usually it's it's actually quite uh, quite educational, but uh, I would say not for children unless you pre-watch the video. Make sure it's okay for children before you like let's say your kids can watch it because uh, yeah, <laughs> there's some language in there that may not be appropriate but on some of them, not all of them. It's really quite funny and so that's I mean these are actually quite versatile I'm I'm surprised I talked myself out of buying these for so long but I'm glad I finally bit the bullet because uh because they are a lot of fun um and this color gee I don't know what brown this is I think it might be burnt carmine it's it's because it's almost like uh like a reddish purpley color it's very pretty and I am leaving some of the white paper showing I like that kind of uh sparkle that I get there now let's uh I am using a bucket of water because I have a bucket of water to to clean my brush but you can always just give it a squeeze and wipe it on a rag to get it pretty well cleaned um, so just for little little water brush tips for you now what I want to do here is um, I want to spread out any remaining color really make sure it's gonna lock down really well on these flowers and I the other thing I really like about these is I might get a little fussy and uptight when painting with regular watercolors um, so this really forces me to be expressive with my strokes I feel very comfortable being expressive with these um, I'm gonna go in with some uh, other just a, just a stick of color and I'm actually gonna redefine some of the petals give it some nice expressive strokes and it's really easy to do that with the dry stick on the wet paper so I wouldn't want to pick this up if I'd been using this one as a palette like as a pan of watercolor I probably wouldn't want to pick it up because it would be kind of soft and um, and it would be getting stuck to my hands and then I'd be getting fingerprints all over everything so uh, keep that in mind while you're working if you do want to do this you can always let it dry and come back re-wet it and go over with your other color and if you don't like this you don't have to do it at all it's just completely completely up to you I want to throw some of those uh, stems back in give it a little bit more uh, I don't know well something something and let me see don't a little more to the uh, I gotta be careful on the green the greens oh that pretty that dried up pretty quick I'll go in a little bit more shadows on some of these green leaves um, if you're working on damp paper the uh, the colors not gonna blend as well when you go back into the water because because some of that water is gonna activate the ink in the ink tense blocks and it, they're gonna it's gonna <clears throat> excuse me lock down it, the same thing with watercolor pencils though if you're using watercolor pencils on wet paper it's gonna do the same thing it's gonna it's gonna lock right into the paper and you won't be able to blend it as well uh, so if you want to retain your marks that's a great way to do it uh, but if you want it to blend you want to let it dry first and then and then go back in but it's completely completely up to you and you know what the only way you're really gonna get it and you're gonna um, you're gonna remember is by doing it so you know don't feel like you have to watch my videos memorize everything and then start you know you should just grab your supplies and go for it you're not gonna do any harm you know it's not like you're gonna develop all these bad habits by experimenting you're gonna understand how why your materials work the way they do by experimenting um, it's not like playing a musical instrument maybe it is I'm not you know musically talented but I, I don't think that you can develop bad habits you know by just jumping in there and experimenting 
you're just going to learn you might you're going to develop new techniques and you're going to learn what style works best for you and um and you're going to get more enjoyment and confidence in your work as well all right now i just want to see what happens if i add a little more water to those blossoms that i just added some more color into maybe just a little here and there i don't want to lose the spont uh, spontaneousness spontaneity of it so i'm just gonna kind of dab in there and maybe just use my darker red as a palette as a uh, pan of watercolor and just add a little bit of a shadow on some of these underlying petals and I always have to remind myself to look back at my flowers because I kind of get in a, like a groove and then I'm just not even looking at my flowers anymore. The, the flowers I'm actually painting from, I'm just kind of going from my imagination. So I have to remind myself, you know, occasionally to glance at those flowers so I know what I'm doing. I know that I'm actually still following the, uh, the actual thing I'm painting. <laughs> All right, I think I'm gonna leave it like that. I really like the spontaneity of this piece. It's um, very impressionistic, very loose. And um, if you have a hard time loosening up, I think this would be an excellent project for you to try. I wanna thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate you subscribing to my channel, sharing it with your friends, and giving me a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.